Welcome to this week's message from Cross Life Church. I'm Andrew Portnoy. Did you know that an article published in a 1967 issue of U.S. News and World Report accurately predicted Apple Pay, online purchasing, and curbside grocery pickup? It also made a few other predictions that show how important it really is to be accurate. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what school will look like in August? Or whether the economy will experience an L recession or a U, V, or W recovery? For families with small children, what does the future hold for them? Today, God clearly reveals His will about the future of humankind and where we should focus right now. Pastor Darren explains in this week's message, Faithful God, Good Future. We made it to the end of 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. I'll be reading verses 12 to 24 today as the basis for today's message. And here they are, beginning at verse 12. The Apostle Paul writes, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. God's word is true. So there was an article in the 1967 issue of U.S. News and World Report, and it, it wrote a bunch of predictions about what life would be like in the 1990s and the 2000s. Very interesting to read. Um, here's one piece of that article. It says, Mother will make even less frequent trips to market where she will insert her charge-a-plate, punch her order into a computer, and have it delivered to her car or even right to her home storage area. <laughs> you go through that and other predictions, and it's amazing. They kind of pointed the way to things like Apple Pay and curbside grocery delivery and even Amazon Prime. But they missed the boat on a few other things. There was a prediction in that article for, for a super jet that would fly 2,000 miles per hour. And then there was this prediction that we would see by the 1990s and 2000s the virtual elimination of bacterial and viral diseases from the common cold to pneumonia. Oops. There is actually, looking back on the article now, much more wrong about its predictions than right about its predictions. And that's the risk we take with predicting the future, isn't it? But it's still worthwhile to predict the future. It has benefits. It, uh, it can cause us to, uh, to pursue beyond frontiers. It can help us do better planning. It can even mean profits for companies and businesses. And a person could proudly say, I told you so. The future is weighing heavily on our minds these coronavirus days, isn't it? I mean, we're asking questions like, what will school even look like in August? And when there's a recession, is that going to be an L or a U or a V or a W? How will your career work out? 
And will our children grow up in a face shield world? You know, as we cover the series about facing a future without fear, we're assuming that we're all thinking about the future, and I believe that's true. And there's different ways that we can react and respond to the future. Some people want to duck, even bury their heads in the sand, and, and deny that there's an uncertain future ahead, and just hide and, and, and pull the covers over their head. Other people, on perhaps the other extreme, since they can't control an uncertain future, like to grab the controls of other things in their lives, especially people in their lives, especially people close to them. Both of those extremes do not honor God, who wants us to trust in his promises about the future and not hide from it and not try, try to control it like, like we're God himself. So listen to these words that the Apostle Paul writes to the Thessalonians, and he's tuning into the future, and it's very interesting in, in this part of 1 Thessalonians 5 and throughout 1 Thessalonians as we've been walking through it these weeks, you're seeing this book talk about the future, talk about the second coming of Christ, but it doesn't give too many details about the second coming, and it gives a lot more detail about the here and now. You want to know what God's will is, these verses say that God's will is focused on how we relate to each other right now. Beginning at verse 16, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil, So what's more important to you? A future that you completely know and understand, or knowing a God who completely knows and understands you, a God who completely loves and takes care of you, a God who completely knows the future that we don't and will completely provide for you and protect you all the way through it, which is more important. Too often, I'm afraid, we've made of this complete knowledge about the future, our God, and we've replaced the God who completely loves us. These words are telling you, when you completely love God who completely loves you and completely put your trust in God who completely gives you reason to trust him, you'll be well equipped for today and for tomorrow. So, Let's look at these words. How can you rejoice always? Because Jesus calms storms. And Jesus multiplies fish and bread of a little boy to feed 5,000 people. That's how you can rejoice always, counting your blessings. What can remind you to pray continually? Huh, that the ascended Jesus rules over every power in this world. And that he requests that, in, that you ask him things, and he's ready for you to pray to him all the time. Why would you give thanks in all circumstances? Because Jesus hides his blessings even in troubles, and because Jesus has a divine purpose for every ounce of pain his believers endure, just like his. It goes on to say, hold on to what is good. How can you hold on to what is good when your grip feels so weak sometimes? You can do that because Jesus is holding on to you. Reject every kind of evil. Really? Even the secret sin, the, the little sin that trips you up again and again, how can you reject that if it's been tripping you up for so many years? You can reject it because Jesus has rejected it. Jesus has condemned that sin by dying on the cross. He's buried it, and then Jesus rose from the dead and left that sin buried, and it does not own or control or even curse you anymore. All of those are packaged together 
in this section where then it says, this is God's will for you. All of it you can do completely because Jesus completely saves you. All of it you can do faithfully to God because God is completely faithful to you. And here is this powerful promise now. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Kids, have you ever cut your lip on the inside, and then mom and dad needed to, like, put their fingers in there, and it was bloody, and they wanted to help you, and mom or dad said, oh, I love every part of you except the inside of your mouth. That's like wet and gross in there. I'm not sticking my finger in there. Do mom or dad say that? Or kids, as you've gone through grades in school, have mom or dad said, you know, we will help you in every grade of school, but not in second grade. Mm -mm -mm. Second grade, we are not going to help you that entire year. Do they say that? No. Mom or dad don't love every part of you except one part, they love every part of you all the time, all the parts. So listen closely because that's what this promise of God is saying to all of us here. And so let me walk through this a little bit with you, this section that I just read, and look at some of these phrases. Let's look at this again. Where does your peace come from? From God himself the God of peace. Which parts of you, your faith, your life, your sins, or your troubles experience God's peace? All of them, all of you, completely sanctified by God, meaning he totally saves you and everything in you and sets you apart into his spiritual family and a safe place for the future. Your whole spirit, soul, and body, the Bible says, kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. From now through the future until the end of time at the coming of Christ, God calls you to faith in him and obeying his will. How can you do it? Because it says, God who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Facing a future without fear starts with a faithful God who doesn't make predictions, but he makes promises like this one here. Stay tuned today for Crosstalk as we explore what it means to quench the Spirit, what it means to treat prophecies with contempt, and how we can handle conflict in a God-pleasing way. We'll do that after I pray and after the children's message. Let's pray. O oh, Holy Spirit, God and Lord, kindle in us the fire of your love today. We don't want to douse you or quench you in any way, but we pray that the fires of faith might be kindled in us as you reignite us to love each other, to be patient with each other, and to do your will here and now, trusting that you will take care of us for the future. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming soon. Amen. Cross Life is excited to announce that we are reopening Sunday worship for gathering in person. If you're local to Pflugerville and would like to join us, please visit our website at crosslifepf.org where we have posted how we will be gathering safely. We hope you'll join us next Sunday. From all of us here at Crosslight, thank you for tuning in. Stay safe and see you next week.